A circle has its center on the side AB of the cyclic quadrilateral ABCD. The other three sides are tangent to the circle. Proof that AD plus BC equals AB. This question was the most accessible problem from the International Met Olympiad in 1985, with the average score being 409 out of 7. Let's go over some definitions and properties that we will need. A quadrilateral is said to be cyclic if it can be inscribed in a circle. ABCD is cyclic if and only if two opposite angles are supplementary. Without loss of generality, let's consider in our proof that these two angles are BAD and BCD. Let's prove this starting with the forward direction of the implication. We know that ABCD is cyclic. Thus, angle BAD's measure is half of the measure of arc BCD. Respectively, angle BCD's measure is half of the measure of arc BAD. Summing them up, their sum is half of the total measure of the circle, which gives us the 180 degrees. To prove the backward direction, we know that angle BAD and BCD are supplementary. Let's assume, however, that ABCD is not cyclic. This implies A is not on the unique circle passing through BC and D. We can assume A is in the exterior of the circle. Let's denote with A prime the intersection of BA with this circle, as A prime BCD is cyclic. By our first implication, we have BA prime D plus BCD equals 180 degrees. But we know that BAD plus BCD equals 180 degrees, implying BAD equals BA prime D. However, looking in triangles BDA and BDA prime, applying the property of the sum of angles and replacing BAD with BA prime D, we have BDA prime equals BDA. This is a contradiction, so our initial supposition is false, meaning that ABCD is cyclic. Note that this drawing was used as a guideline, and the proof would work the same way, regardless if A is inside the circle or outside of it. ABCD is cyclic if and only if the angles that the diagonals form with two opposite sides are equal. Let's consider these angles to be BAC and BDC. Let's start with the first implication. We know that ABCD is cyclic. Then, BAC's measure is half of the measure of the arc BC and BDC's measure is half of the measure of arc BC. So, BAC equals BDC. Proving the second implication, we know that BAC and BDC have equal measures. Just as we did before, we assume that ABCD is not cyclic. We select A prime the same way we did before. Using a similar approach, we get that BCA prime equal BCA, which is a contradiction, so ABCD has to be cyclic. As before, the proof works the same way regardless of the choice of position for A inside or outside the circle. Now we move on to tangents. A tangent line to a circle is a line that touches the circle at exactly one point. From any point P outside of the circle, two tangent lines can be drawn. The tangent line to a circle is perpendicular to the radius to that point. And lastly, given a circle O on exterior point P and PA, PB the tangent lines, PO bisects the angle APB. Let's prove this last property.
Given that PO is a common side, angles BAO and PBO are both equal to 90 degrees and OA and OB are equal as radii of the circle, triangles PAO and PBO are congruent, so angles APO and BPO are equal. Like with any good geometry problem, getting the drawing right is half the work. We start with the circle, add a side AB going through the center, and add points C and D. Now we have a quadrilateral. However, the sides are not tangent to the given circle. We see that simply moving a point doesn't help. For BC, CD, and DA to all be tangents to the circle, they all need to be outside it. First, move A and B, and let's start over with the drawing. We add the two tangents from each point. D has to be on one of A's tangents, and C on one of B's. Without loss of generality, let's assume they are both on the upper half. Move them around until we arrive at the inscriptable quadrilateral ABCD. Armed with these properties, let's start the proof. Remember that we are interested in proving that AD plus BC equals AB. First, we make a construction that helps us understand it some better. Choose point P on AB such that AP equals AD and assume without loss of generality that P is between O and B. Triangle ADP is isocells, so ADP equals APD. Using the sum of angles in a triangle, we get that APD equals 180 degrees minus DAP divided by 2, which equals DCB divided by 2, which equals DCO. Using the reverse of the second property, alongside DPO equals DCO, we get that DCPO is a cyclic quadrilateral. By property 1, CDO plus CPO equals 180 degrees. As CPB plus CPO also equals 180 degrees, we get that angle CPB equals angle CDO. By property 5, CDO is half of angle ADC, so the measure of angle CPB is also half of the measure of angle ADC. By property 1 in quadrilateral ABCD, ADC plus ABC equals 180 degrees. Putting the two together, we get that CPB equals 180 degrees minus PBC divided by 2. Using the sum of angles in triangle PBC and the equation between CPB and PBC, we get that angles CPB and PBC are equal. Finally, this means that the triangle CPB is isocells, so BC equals BP, and so AD plus BC equals AP plus BP, which is AB. Thanks for watching! If you enjoyed this and would love to see more, like this video, subscribe to the channel and hit the alarm bell to be notified when new videos are released. Leave any comments about this problem below or on the problems dedicated webpage. For more info, check the description box below. See you next time!